Hey everybody, this is Ms. Kent with today's reading comprehension lesson. Now we've discussed in class that reading comprehension doesn't necessarily mean that you can fill out a Venn diagram comparing and contrasting two things or fill out a cause and effect chart. It doesn't mean that you just can answer some questions that go with a story. Comprehension is the ability to think as you're reading. So that means that you're understanding and you're processing the story. So you might be asking yourself questions as you read. What's going to happen next? Why did that character do that? Sometimes we're able to figure it out because we read on, and other times we might need to ask a friend or look it up on the internet or maybe read another book with more information. A lot of times authors like to infer. That means they don't come right out and tell us, this is why this happened. We have to take our background knowledge plus the text clues to make an inference. So we have to think about our background knowledge and the things we already know, connect it with the test and the text, excuse me, and then infer what has just happened in the story or what's going to happen. If you don't have the background knowledge, you can always ask your parent or your grandparent that you're home with, or maybe you can look it up on the internet and do a little research to get the background knowledge. We have we had started a unit in class that we were unable to finish, <clears throat> and I want to go ahead and finish that unit. So the work that you might be receiving in your workbook or online might not exactly line up with what we're doing right now, but that's okay because comprehension is the ability to think as you read. So we have read these books in class, <clears throat> Cinderella, Adelita, The Rough-Faced Girl, and all of these books had a common theme, and that theme was kindness wins over evil, or good is always going to be rewarded over bad. And Cinderella was the good sister, and she was rewarded over the evil stepsisters. Okay. In the story Cinderella, there was the glass slipper, the shoe. And remember, the, the sisters tried it on. It didn't fit their foot. It did fit Cinderella's. Now, if you're familiar with some of the old fairy tales, Grimm's fairy tales, they're kind of a little bit harsh for children, but they talk about in that story, the stepsisters actually cut their toes off so they can fit into that shoe because they want to be the ones to marry the prince. So there's this little bit of a saying or figurative language you might hear sometime, and I'm sorry about the glare, but it says, if the shoe fits, wear it. So if you're perceived as doing something, and perceived means people see it that way, then you should accept it. So maybe people see you as being very athletic, like, oh, you're a good runner. But you really don't think you're a good runner. You think, oh, man, I'm, I always come in second place. But because other people think you're a good runner, and second place is pretty good, you need to accept the fact that you're a good runner. So if the shoe fits wear it. This little phrase of figurative language is going to apply to the story that we're going to have at the end of this unit, Chris Van Allsburg, one of his books that I really enjoy. So if the shoe fits, wear it means if something's perceived or thought of that way, then you need to accept it. The story that we're going to have has a lot of figurative language and, and sayings you need the background knowledge for. <clears throat> so today, I'm going to read The Aesop's Fable, The Milkmaid, and The Pale. Now, this is a story we've already had the moral or the lesson to, but we haven't had this particular story. And I wanted to read this particular story because this is the origin or the original spot this lesson came from. Now, remember, fairy tales had an element of magic. In all the Cinderella stories, there was an element of magic. This is considered a fable. And in fables, there's going to be a lesson or a moral to the story. A lot of times in fables, there's talking animals, but not in every fable. But, but the majority of them have talking animals like tortoise and the hare. So remember, as I'm reading this today, I want you to think of the lesson that could be learned. The milkmaid and the pail. Once upon a time, a milkmaid was walking to a market, carrying her milk in a pail on her head. Now, a market is a store. She began to plan what she would do with the money she would get for the milk. 
I think I'll buy some chickens from Farmer Brown, she said, and they will lay eggs each morning, which I can sell to the parson's wife. With the money that I get from the eggs, I'll buy myself a new dress and a new hat. And when I go to market, all the young men will come up and speak to me. Polly Shaw will be so jealous, but I don't care. I shall just look at her and toss my head like this. As she spoke, she tossed her head back and the pail fell off. All the milk was spilled. Now think about this story. What is the lesson or the moral here? <clears throat> I want you to stop the video for a minute and think about the lesson or the moral. And there are, were some literal things said. When I say literal, you're not having to infer about it. That were literally said in this story that can help you with the lesson or moral. So pause it now and see if you can figure out what today's lesson or moral is. Today's lesson or moral, and some of you might have said, don't plan things or don't be so ugly because, you know, she was thinking about how pretty she was going to be in her new dress. But the lesson today is, and we've had this one before, So the lesson today is don't count your chickens before they hatch. And what does that mean? She had already said in the story she was going to buy chickens. And those chickens were going to lay eggs. And she was going to bring the eggs back to the market and sell the eggs to get a dress. And she was so caught up in her beautiful dress and how pretty she was going to be that she had that milk pail on her head. When she tossed her head back, the milk fell off. Okay, so we had kind of talked about in class before that a chicken might lay 10 eggs. And you could say, I'm going to have 10 chicks. But that doesn't mean you're going to have 10 chicks because some of the eggs might not actually hatch. So don't plan for something until it actually happens. That's the moral of that story. I also want to go over one more bit of figurative language. And it's going to be... Let sleeping dogs lie. Let sleeping dogs lie. Hmm. Has anybody ever heard that? Let sleeping dogs lie. And L-I-E does mean to lie down, not to tell a story like a lie. Let sleeping dogs lie. So you may have a dog at home and... When they're asleep, they're, oh, they're so peaceful. Maybe you have a big dog that's in the yard that sleeps. Have you ever ran up on that dog and woke him up? Or maybe even you have a, a, a sibling that maybe you've, like, surprised and woke him up. The origin of this phrase comes from the fact that if you ever have a big dog and you try to like scare them awake or just wake them up, dogs can be unpredictable, meaning you don't know what they're going to do. That dog might jump up and bite you just because it doesn't know what's going on. When a dog is suddenly disturbed, its actions can be unpredictable. Now this phrase is not just applying to dogs. If somebody says to you, you need to let sleeping dogs lie, It means whatever you're talking about, you just need to leave it alone. Don't open that can of worms. 
if you remember that figurative language, which means don't start something you can't finish. Let the sleeping dogs lie. The problem's already been solved. Don't try to restart the problem because you don't know how it'll end. Now, I'm going to show you the cover to the book that we're going to be working up to. Oh, well, this is the cover for the words. But the book is The Chronicles of Harris Burdick. Um, this is the book with the stories, but just the illustrations are by Chris Van Ellsberg. There's a separate book with just illustrations. It's a very good story. I can't wait till we get to it, but first got to get all the background knowledge for it. Hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.